Welcome to our comprehensive exploration of international trade. In today's interconnected world, international trade stands as a cornerstone of the global economy, driving growth and development. Yet, the dynamics of trade are anything but simple. With numerous variables at play, from resource distribution to labor markets, understanding trade patterns can be quite complex. This complexity necessitates the use of economic models. Economists have developed these models to demystify the intricacies of trade and provide us with a clearer picture of how and why nations exchange goods and services. So, as we embark on this journey, we'll delve deep into the very models that unravel these trade dynamics, starting with the renowned Heckscher-Lean model. Based on the concept of factor endowments, this model offers a profound explanation for trade patterns. Stay tuned as we dissect its principles and uncover its valuable insights, providing vital clarity and understanding. International trade patterns can be exceptionally complex, driven by an array of diverse factors. From natural resources to labor markets and technological advancements, each element adds a layer of intricacy, making it challenging to predict and fully understand trade behaviors. Factors such as varying production capabilities, differences in resource endowments, and political policies all play pivotal roles. Without a structured model, these intricacies can appear overwhelming. That's where the Heckscher-Lean model comes in. It offers a lens to decode these patterns by focusing on factor endowments. In the next segment, we will explore the foundation of this model and how it promises to make sense of the seemingly chaotic world of international trade. To address the complexities we've discussed, let's introduce the Heckscher-Lean model. Developed by Eli Heckscher and Bertel Alleen, this model provides a robust framework for understanding international trade through the lens of factor endowments. It builds on the principle that countries export goods requiring resources they have in abundance and import goods that require resources in short supply. By focusing on endowments like labor, land, and capital, the Heckscher-Lean model helps explain why trade patterns differ between nations. Comprehending this model's basics sets the stage for deeper insights into global trade dynamics. Coming up next, we will delve into the specific components of factor endowments and how they influence a nation's trade capabilities. Factor endowments are the resources that a country possesses naturally, like labor, land, and capital. Essentially, these are the building blocks that define a nation's economic capabilities. Types of factor endowments include human resources, covering the skills and workforce available, natural resources, such as minerals, oil, and agricultural land, and capital resources, meaning the machinery and financial assets that support production. Understanding these endowments is crucial because they directly influence what a country can produce most efficiently. For instance, a nation rich in fertile land is more likely to excel in agricultural products, whereas a country with abundant skilled labor might focus on technology-intensive goods. You'll see how these factor endowments shape trade patterns based on their unique resource advantages. Countries with vast natural resources, like Saudi Arabia with its oil reserves or Brazil with its fertile lands, showcase how factor endowments shape trade patterns. According to the Heckscher-Lean model, resource availability influences what a country exports. Nations rich in natural resources tend to specialize in goods that heavily utilize these assets. For instance, Canada, abundant in timber, is one of the world's largest exporters of lumber. Similarly, Australia, with its extensive mineral deposits, exports significant quantities of iron ore and coal. By capitalizing on their natural advantages, these countries efficiently meet both domestic and international demand. As we move forward, you will see how the Heckscher-Lean model breaks down step by step to better understand its implications on trade patterns. Let's break down the Heckscher-Lean model to understand how it explains trade patterns. First, consider the concept of factor endowments. Each country has a unique mix of resources, such as labor, land, and capital. The model starts by identifying these resources in a given country. Next, we assess how these resources are employed. According to the model, 
countries will naturally produce and export goods that utilize their abundant resources. For instance, a country rich in capital will focus on capital-intensive products, whereas a country with abundant labor will produce labor-intensive goods. The third step involves understanding opportunity costs. Countries will opt to import goods that are costly to produce domestically due to resource scarcity. This comparative advantage drives international trade, making it mutually beneficial. The fourth step looks at price equalization. Over time, international trade tends to balance the prices of goods and factors. So, a capital-abundant country exporting capital-intensive goods will see their price relative to labor-intensive goods adjust to reflect international market trends. Finally, let's consider the dynamic impact over time. As global trade patterns evolve, the Heckscher-Lean model provides a framework to anticipate which industries may expand or contract based on resource shifts and trade policy changes. By breaking down these steps, we can see how the model offers a comprehensive approach to understanding trade patterns rooted in resource availability. As we move forward, you'll see how this model applies to real-world scenarios, illustrating its practical relevance in today's global economy. The heckscher lean model can be seen in action within various countries' trade patterns. By applying this model, we gain clear insights into how nations leverage their unique resources. For instance, countries rich in natural resources like Brazil and Australia excel in exporting commodities such as minerals and agricultural products. Meanwhile, nations with abundant skilled labor and capital, like Germany and Japan, dominate in the export of manufactured goods and technology. These real-world applications highlight the model's validity and practical utility for forecasting trade behaviors. As we explore these case studies further, the model's relevance becomes even more apparent, providing a robust understanding of global trade dynamics. This model doesn't just theorize trade, it demonstrates how theory translates into actual economic activities, making it indispensable for students, educators, and policymakers alike. As we move forward, you'll see how adopting this model can influence national economic strategies. The heckscher lean model is a cornerstone in explaining international trade, extending beyond simple trade predictions to shed light on the intricate patterns of global commerce and resource utilization. One of its primary advantages lies in its ability to provide a robust framework that integrates factor endowments, making the complexities of trade more comprehensible. This model offers a nuanced understanding of how countries leverage their abundant resources to specialize and trade efficiently. Insights gained from the heckscher lean model also reveal the dynamics of comparative advantage and the importance of different resources like labor, land, and capital. By utilizing this model, policymakers can design better trade policies, and educators and students can grasp the foundational principles of economics more cohesively. As we move forward, you'll see how the criticisms and limitations of the model can also provide deeper insights into its real-world application. While the heckscher lean model provides significant insights into international trade, it's not without its limitations. Critics argue that the model oversimplifies the complexities of trade by assuming perfect competition and identical production technologies across countries. Additionally, the model often fails to account for modern trade factors like technology transfers and multinational corporations, which play crucial roles in today's global economy. In real-world applications, the model can fall short in predicting trade patterns accurately, especially in cases where non-factor endowment variables dominate. Despite these criticisms, understanding these limitations is essential for a nuanced view of international trade. As we move forward, you'll see how other models address some of these gaps and add to our understanding of global economic interactions. As we reach the end of our journey through the heckscher lean model, let's recap the key points explored. We've delved into the complexity of international trade and identified the need for a robust model to understand it. From understanding factor endowments and their influence on trade patterns to breaking down the heckscher lean model step by step, we've seen how this framework elucidates the dynamics of global commerce. We've examined real-world applications, noted the benefits, and contemplated the criticisms and limitations of the model. 
In essence, the Hecksherlene model offers a valuable perspective on how countries leverage their resources to engage in trade, providing a foundational framework that enhances our understanding of this intricate subject. Thank you for joining us on this exploration. To further your learning, make sure to subscribe and follow us for more in-depth content on economic models and global trade. To dive deeper into economic models and international trade, Subscribe to our channel and follow us for more educational content. Stay tuned as we continue to explore and demystify the world of economics. By subscribing, you'll gain access to a wealth of resources designed to enhance your understanding and keep you ahead in your studies. Don't miss out on our upcoming videos where we break down complex concepts into easily digestible insights. Thank you for joining us on this learning journey. Together, we can unlock the secrets of the global economy.